What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to episode 14 of Invictus Power Hour. I am your host just for today, Nick Goutman. Alex has said is unfortunately out sick, so let's all send him some positive vibes. But in the meantime, I'm here with Ryan Gross, our host, our second hostess with the mostest, and our guest of honor for today, outlandish Zicky Dice. The hottest free agent in the game just made the Invictus podcast outlandish. How you doing, fellas? Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. Happy you could be here, Zicky. How's everything going on today? How's everything in your neck of the woods? You know, uh, it, it's been a, a slow, relaxing day, which is very rare. Still doing a little bit of work on the side because the work never stops. You know, the grind, uh, got to keep grinding to get to that next level. So, but it's been, it's been relaxing. You know, Easter Bunny stopped by, left a few eggs, and uh, that was that. Yeah, absolutely. I forgot. Today is Easter. Happy Easter, everyone, for those celebrating. Easter, um, yes. Yeah, you know, I mean, our family keeps it pretty low-key. We just eat some food and exchange some, you know, we still do the gift baskets, even though we're adults and everything like that. It's still, you know, just gift, gift it's festive. I didn't get one this year. I, I mean, oh. I'm going to look. Yeah, no gift baskets yet. Damn. So we'll, we'll peep. We'll have to see, you know. Got to make it a call to someone. Peeps away from me. No peeps. I don't want no peeps. Not a fan or just, you know, you're, they're too no, addicting. We'll, we'll, give, we'll give them the Ryan. We'll give our peeps the Ryan. Exactly. That's perfect. A little bit of a sugar perfect. freak, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome, man. So, um, Zicky, you know, it's been a, it's been a long time, you know, since, you know, a lot of us have been able to be fully involved in wrestling to a degree. You know, where, where are you currently, you know, geographically? Well, I got married in October in California on a Saturday. And then that following Monday, I packed up and moved to Atlanta, Georgia, baby. I'm oh, out wow. here running Georgia, running the South. Oh, well, congratulations the South. on the wedding. Yeah, thank you. Hey, was it a uh, what kind of ceremony was it, especially in times of COVID and such? Well, we we had to uninvite about 130 people, which was great. I was very happy about that. So if you got uninvited and you're watching, sorry, but not sorry. You saved me a buck in the long run. So thank <laughs> you. Uh, and then we got married in um, my wife's parents' uh, beautiful backyard in San Inez, California. With like a, oh, like a awesome. magazine. We had a little pizza truck pull up. Just fr- close friends and family there. Awesome. Pizza truck. Yes, it's like old school, Ooh. like pizza truck. It was real nice. Yeah, real good stuff. I was about to say, that's like wedding goals right there, I feel like. It was awesome. We had this like, <laughs> blueberry, delicious blueberry cake, and oh, God, it was, Ooh. It was incredible. But that's really good. That's it's really awesome to hear that. I mean, it was definitely making light of a otherwise kind of, you know, dark time and everything, you know? The show must go on, you know? Uh, it's, Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm the fool that popped the question, so... <laughs> I had to Man. follow through, you know. Can't back out is now. The, ring, the cater was already you? paid. You know what I mean? <laughs> you had to say, you know that, that 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 would be a rough conversation to have to mm-hmm. undo all those things, you know. But hey, man, happy wife, happy life. Hope everything's going well now and everything like that. Yes, still. life is good, baby. Happy to hear it, man. So, um, you know, back to the topic of the squared circle. You know, Zicky, um, what made you really get into wrestling? Oh, I've been you know, from a, a fan perspective. Fan wrestling fan my whole life i uh, grew up in a wrestling household uh professional wrestling got me in and i hate this term but amateur wrestling wrestled freestyle greco-roman um all uh all of that until sophomore year until my pops had passed away and then i found punk rock and started a band and did that whole thing and then that led me back to uh professional wrestling so that was the full uh, circle there from one side of the carnival to the other and i know there's a lot I'd of say things. punk rock that's like quite the uh it, again, you're talking about like a sort of like a niche sort of community, but so like tightly woven community, you know, the very, wrestling, it, community. Uh, wrestling and music. Uh, it, it's very similar. Like, honestly, the, the from the, the, the fans and just how you approach business and everything. It's uh, it's uh, like I said, it's the same carnival. I, I completely get that. It's a very interesting uh, comparison to drawing because like now we're even seeing how like some music acts are incorporating wrestling into like their drawing factor i know some bands use like the live death match or something like that as like an, an appeal in some way or something like that you know, there's oh a lot yeah of there's bands, yeah bands have shot videos in the ring uh, there's a few wrestlers that are in bands themselves uh yeah. you know andy williams Brody king uh um what's his name man uh mandrews not mankind no, not mankind. <laughs> that would be sick, though. Imagine. Um, well, no, just it. all of his different personalities. Singing in a band. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the whole band. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. So, but, I mean, yeah, okay, like so, I said, it, it's pretty much the same. You know, music, wrestling, it's the same community, same kind of vibes. Um, and I miss them both dearly. You know, I, I, I remember 
you go to so many shows, it's like, yeah, I don't really want to go to another show. But now since everything's been shut down, it's like, you know, I'm ready to go to a show. I'm ready to see some I, What's up, kitty? Definitely. Well, we always have occasional well, appearances from our cats. Cats are just, you know, very inconvenient. Love always that. around when you don't want them. Yeah, I Do you have any cats, uh, pets? Today. I have a dog named Ric Flair. He's around somewhere probably scratching at the door. Yes. That's around, incredible. Stick him on a walk. His release command is woo, in case you were wondering. <laughs> very smart. Very nice. smart. That, that's a skilled dog. Can he give a good chop as well? Uh, yeah, we took him swimming once. He chopped the lady when he got stuck on the side of the pool. He jacked up this lady his first time going swimming at this place. Uh, does, he, does he strut when he walks, too? Oh, he struts when he walks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when he craps, too. <laughs> My man. Yeah. Um, the so... Of, Ziggy, when you when you first got started off, you know where did you first start training? Black and Brave Wrestling Academy under Merrick Brave and Seth Rollins. Very cool. What was your um? What was your like, experience class. like? What was my experience like? Um, I packed up my stuff from California, moved over to the Midwest, moved to Moline, Illinois. I'd never been there before, um, and it was quite the learning experience. You know, uh, we were in the third class of Black and Brave, like I had said, and now they have this their own fancy gym. Uh, we didn't have that luxury back when I was a student there. We were running out of the Quad City CrossFit gym. <clears throat> Excuse me. Had to set up the ring, tear it down uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, at this point, he was still doing Raw and SmackDown. So he was gone Mondays, Tuesdays, but he'd be there every Wednesday and Thursday. And a lot of people would always say, oh, I bet you he wasn't in the ring. I bet you he wasn't even there. No, that's complete BS. He was there all the time. Dude, eat, sleep, and shit's wrestling. Um uh, and it was a great experience. I, I learned a lot. I, uh, we were forced to do CrossFit. On, uh, in between, we had to do a certain amount of uh, days of CrossFit on top of training. And that was it was a great experience overall. And I, I was breaking into the business a little late. And I wanted to be trained by, in my personal opinion, we can argue this, um, but the best in the world. And um, at that time, I was at WrestleMania 31. I watched him cashed in. And it was two weeks later that I moved to the Midwest and I was one of 12 to have trained with the current WWE champion, which is pretty cool. That's incredible. I was about to say, you know, I haven't heard too much in terms of like his, you know, in terms of murmurings about him being there or not being there, but it's very awesome to see, you know, that someone stays to their roots like that. And the CrossFit side is very interesting. I must say what was it's brutal. Well, I was, I was just going to say, I, I follow CrossFit quite a bit, actually, like some of the uh, athletes and stuff. What was your, experience training with that while also learning wrestling oh it was uh well luckily i had the wrestling background like growing up a little bit right but Mm -hmm. uh it's completely different you have to relearn a lot of things um and learn new things and uh you know i just went in with an open mind and try and shut my mouth and tried to learn as much as possible and uh after graduating i stuck around the area for a while and uh I couldn't have asked for a better experience, you know, looking back. And I'm very thankful um, that I went the route that I did and I fly the black and brave flag uh, proudly. That's, that's really cool to hear. I take, I knew what it was going into it. Right. And I've seen like sticking around, seeing all these other classes, they just had their 20th graduating class. Congratulations to them, by the way, but 20, 20 groups of uh, people that want to be professional wrestlers. Right. And out of all 20 uh, groups, you know, there's maybe anywhere from, I think the max will take is uh, 15 a class. I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. But there's only a certain handful that really want this, right? And I knew that I really wanted this. Going uh, going into it late, I sold literally everything I had. I came straight from a tour with uh, my band, Heart to Heart, and packed up a move. I had nothing, nothing to my name. Um, it was very tough, um, mentally, physically emotionally you name it it was it was very tough and i see a lot of people that just go and they're like you know they spend this money and they they just want to hang out with seth rollins you know they just want to hang out and say that they did this there's only a very select few and i keep my eye on who who rolls through that that actually want this and i make sure and i and like i say when i fly this flag proudly i make sure to set the bar i want people to be like oh outlandish zicky dice came through the black and brave and look what he's doing you know i want um like ben carter ben carter signing to nxt uk incredible mm-hmm. dude shout out to ben there's a lot of good talent coming out of black and brave and I, and there's the select few i want to set the bar for everyone that goes through black and brave like hook hey look if you all, all they do they train you and they give you one match you get one match and then you're booted out the door and you're on your own you know you're straight wow. from there that's it 
Uh, so it, you get what you put into it. And here I am going on my sixth year and uh, the shit I've accomplished in six years is incredible. I'm very proud of my career uh, and the things I've accomplished, but I'll tell you this, I'm still hungry and we haven't reached the top yet. We haven't even left the nest. We haven't even opened the wings that are outlander Ziggy dice. Um, wow. And I look forward to unveiling that with the world. And I like to say every, everywhere I go right now, I'm giving everyone a little bit of outlandish Ziggy Dice stock here. Take this, take this, take this. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to, we're going to the moon, baby. I was just about to say, I'm taking my stock and going right to the moon with it. You stuck the words right out of my mouth. Um, well, on top of everything you've accomplished, what, what's next for Ziggy Dice? Like, well, like what, do you, what left do you have to accomplish? Uh, you know, um, I get the sickening feeling every single day of my life that I'm not on TV yet, and it bothers me. It truly bothers me deep down. I deserve, I belong, I'm going to earn, I'm going to take whatever it is that gets me on television every single week. That, that, that they're... Did you see the promo video I released last week? Show me oh, yeah. somebody else on the indies doing what Outlander Sticky Dice is doing. Over 2 million views on Twitch. Weekly front page stream. I was just going to say, you know, the um, <coughs> the hunger that you, like, have been it, like, showing and actively vocal, like, have been vocally expressing just, you know, your desire for these things is very much so, like, something to admire from anyone who wants to break into the business, you know? You Don't need you to have put that. put that out into the universe? You got it. You got to say something. I Absolutely. see my buddies left and right getting scooped up, signing contract deals like you wouldn't believe. Where the hell is mine? Where's mine, huh? Let me ask you, 220 days with the NWA World's Television Championship. Ask yourselves out loud right now, what happened to everybody else that held that same championship? I'll wait. Name them. Name, give, give me a few names. I'll tell you what happened. You don't even have to answer the question. Make a stardom. So why in the hell are we still sitting here playing games? You can't ignore the fact that outlandish Zicky Dice's money. I don't care what you have to say. Show me somebody in the Indies working harder than me. And guess what? I'll show them up. And I'll tell you I this. I love it. I've got friends in high places, but ain't nobody advocating for outlandish Zicky Dice to come and take their spot. And I'm going to come and take your spot. I'm coming to take spots. I love it, Zick. I love the energy and, you know, clearly oh, that is, energy. This, this is real, baby. This is the real emotion. I'm sick. I'm sick oh. and tired every single day that goes by. I pack up my shit and I move across the country so I can be somewhere where wrestling's a little bit more live and well. I've got the views on Twitch. I'm releasing weekly content with the top quality production. Look at this. Look at this. You see what I just bought? A 6K camera. Now you're going to get Ziggy Dice in higher definition. <laughs> where you can see every blonde curl. See, when you are talking, like, for, so you're, you're clearly very fired up about this. You're, you're eager off. to get going. I'm oh, pissed you're pissed off, off. I know. I I'm sick of it. I am sick of it. My phone should be ringing off the hook. There should be a tug of war battle. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a waiting game. or I don't, I I don't know what but it's coming. It's coming. So, and you can't ignore it. Ryan can't ignore it. The viewers watching right now can't ignore it. Hell, keep talking shit about outlandish Zicky Dice because my name is on the tip of your tongues. And all the dirt sheets, everything they say, every time I see my name in the dirt sheets, it turns me on a little bit because I get paid either way, gentlemen. I love it. Uh, who do you think right now, you know, when you, when you look at the landscape of wrestling, like who is your top guy who you're gunning for? You know, it was like, you know what? I want their spot. I want their spot at the table. You know, that's a tough question. And I, I, I guess I can answer it this way. Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks is making a damn name for himself. Dude's a megastar. And yes, although I did pin Ricky Starks and take the championship from him, I still feel like we have unfinished business. So let him keep climbing the ranks. And one of these days, maybe I'll just have to put a plastic bag over Ricky Starks' face and take everything from him live on television. I don't know. You never know what can happen on Wednesday nights. Nope. That's for damn sure. Um, so with that being said, you know, is is uh uh TNT Wednesdays the goal? Is that your top priority in terms that's of promotion or are you that's the goal? I saw a comment the other day, I almost pissed my pants laughing so hard. Someone said, Oh, how land is Zicky Dice is putting all of his eggs in that AEW basket. You damn right I am. 
because I know where I fit and I know where I belong. And with the company that's so new in 10 to 15 years, I want to be one that says, I helped it. I helped grow that company. I helped get it to the next level. And let me just say, for those that are watching Cody Rhodes, Tony Khan, the EVPs, we, we, let's just clear the air. Let me start over. <clears throat> Hi, my name's Outlandish Zicky Dice, and I'm posting here in Craigslist Misconnections. I, I saw you walking by the other day in your black and gold t-shirt, and I couldn't help but smile inside. I wish I would have said something, but we just, we need to connect. That's what it is. It's a misconnection. It's a misconnection. I don't know what you've heard about Outlandish Zicky Dice, but guess what? It's all true. Everything you heard is true, and you can't deny the ratings. So, fellas, pick up the phone and call today. I'm sitting here by the goddamn hotline. You heard him. TK, right now. My as you're listening told to this me podcast. To be careful when I do these kind of interviews because my blood pressure starts going through the roof. I could bust, bust a blood vessel or some, some crap. But you know what? Here we are. Maybe Tylenol right? might help with that. I heard that might help with heart, with uh, blood pressure. I don't know. I got Just, Ryan over here looking at me like he wants a, a meet and greet or an eight by ten for you, Ryan. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so okay, we 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 talked about your match with um Mr. Starks. Uh, what are some other maybe standouts for you in terms of matches that you've had? Matches that I've had? Yeah. Oh man. Uh, dang, this is always a tough question. I, there's a few that I've had. Um, wrestling Effie in Louisiana um was super cool because I met Effie. Uh, on tour with the band before he was uh, a wrestler. And I was like, Hey, I'm going to train to be a wrestler. And we became friends. And um, five years down the road, here we are wrestling in Louisiana. You know, um, it was a pretty cool story. So little stuff like that. I really took in um, wrestling. Uh, DJ Z Joaquin wild now um, was pretty cool for prestige wrestling. Um, man, uh, making my AAW debut in Chicago was pretty cool. That was a huge goal for me. All the greats uh, always go through AAW before taking off to the next level. Oh, yeah. um, so that was a huge goal. I just accomplished a new goal. I don't know if you saw the rumors that happened this past weekend, but Southern Honor Wrestling out here in Atlanta, Georgia, they've got some top quality productions. Uh, Kenny Omega showed up. Chris Jericho stops on by. And Tony Schiavone sits and watches the shows. And, you know, no one invited Outlander Zicky Dice, so I sat in the front row for three hours with this chimpanzee mask on, and I invited myself, and I attacked Owen Knight um, this past Friday night. So I guess I'm going to show up May 7th to Southern Honor and just – here's the thing. If you're not going to invite me, I I'm kicking every single door down. You're going to see – I love that. You're, you're going to see the pink glittery fanny pack walk through the door, and, and I hope, you know, you're going to feel one of two things – and what the first thing you might feel is a little shat inside your pants, okay? Because Zicky Dice just walked through the building. The second thing, you're going to be afraid. You're going to be afraid because I'm there to take over. Then there's nothing nobody can do about it. I get hungrier uh, by the day. I get, I get more pissed off by the hour. Try me, please. I dare you. Oh, and I, I'm hitting the trampoline park, by the way. I love I love it, Ziggy. I was I was just gonna say, you know, I I was, I was catching some of your uh, stuff recently, but I did not catch that. I will have to catch the highlights. But so you've been I doing kept some it a secret. I got you know. I don't <laughs> like, I, I, I'm not a kiss and tell type of guy. I win. Totally understand. Um, one um, final question. I just had you know. I'm losing power here. Sorry about that. Um, oh, no. One of the lights just went out. Threw me off. Um, the outlandish what happens all the time. Don't, don't worry about <laughs> it. Just go with it. Got to go with the flow sometimes. Um, what exactly? Okay, so you, I had, I, I did hear the 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 big F word being thrown around there. Uh, fanny pack. Mm. Um, what? How many do you currently own? And what is your like? You know, because I I know some people like are very big into the fanny pack trend now. It's it's a it's like regained a lot of traction. Could because of Zicky Dice. It is. Yeah. Yeah. What exactly is the uh, appeal of it for a man such as yourself? Well, you know, everyone, don't ask what's inside. It's right here next to me. It's always within arm's reach, but I have one fanny pack. Sometimes on the Twitch streams, I, I raffle off a ring-worn one, and I, I upgrade and get a new one. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what It just makes my life easier. You know, I, got I that. feel naked without it. I've heard that from so many people, that they're just like, without their fanny pack, it's like literally they don't know like where half their – belongings are when i'm traveling especially in the airport especially near the ring it's a baby 
You ever seen that movie Stuck on You? Yeah. That's how I feel with the fanny pack. We had, you had to I totally get that. Movement. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it like I, I know you I know you do the classic, you know, in front around the you know, by the hips. What's with this whole like around That's for the emo boys. Yeah, right. Like I don't get it. That's what dang you get it. is that the did the one cat go from your screen to his screen? No, yeah, that's my cat. He's probably just trying that's to get sick. you know that's my, a long cat. my stash. I love cats. I love shout out to the cat. Um Rig Bay. No, yeah. Yeah, I got <laughs> I got slippers with fanny packs on them. Too. Oh, that's amazing. So sometimes I rock three fanny packs. But the emo boys do that whole, I don't know, yeah. like over the, you know. It's like the influencer thing now. I see it all yeah, the time. Yeah, I don't get it. Would, that's, yeah, that's, you know. Yeah. I like how you keep it, like, that. you know, original with it. You know, like, it's supposed to be around the hips. It's not supposed to be, it's not like a backpack. Thank you. No, no. I don't I get don't, it. I don't need any of that baloney. <laughs> Um, before we jump into fan questions, Ryan, I just wanted to leave it open to you if you had any final follow-up questions oh, before where, we... Ryan? I'm just curious, what inspired your wrestling style? Like, how you incorporate some magic into some of your wrestling? What uh, Life experience. I, You know, I stopped doing some of the magic stuff for a little while, and I don't always need it, but I always feel the show out, right? If there's um, if some of the match calls for it, yeah, I can spit fire, make a card float. I can have cards shoot out of here, shoot out of there. Do I want to incorporate it? Yeah, a little bit more here and there, and there, but I don't need it because there's a lot of things I can do. And what I'm trying to focus on right now is showing all sides of the die. All pun intended. Absolutely. And, uh, I totally get that. I, I, don't, I don't think this question was asked. Uh, who are some of your influences in wrestling? Uh, Mr. Perfect, Ravishing Rick Rude, Owen awesome. Hart, Shawn Michaels, um, uh, Rick Martel, uh, yeah, that, those are pretty fan. much heavy, yeah. Big fan of all those guys, Rick Rude especially. And, you know, that's uh, – there was a point in time, you know, in, in the 80s where I had friends say, like, the style you're doing is not going to work. But you know what? That's the wrestling that I grew up watching. That's the wrestling I love. I love the bright colors. I love the characters. I love the, the, the simple moves and, you know, actually – having to do some damage to somebody you know there's a point in time where a ddt was devastating you know like yeah. really bringing damage back and uh with, with just simple moves and, and you know really shine the character you know, I, I can work i'm an entertainer uh first uh first of all and uh i really like letting that shine yeah and uh all those names you mentioned huge entertainers uh like, like i said rick rude Shawn michaels very much big showman yeah. and I, I feel like that's not really too mainstream anymore, you know? No, no. Well, I, I like to bring that back, some character work, yeah. some storytelling, you know? Yeah. Like I said, we'll rewind a little bit. Zicky Dice would be a huge asset anywhere he lands. Go ahead and have that be the clickbait part of this interview. <laughs> you got it. No, I totally agree. You know, everyone likes a versatile performer, you know, whether it's in the ring, whether it's cutting a promo, whether it's even just some adding some extra flair to it, no pun intended, again, with the – well, you know, I missed my opportunity. We wouldn't be doing this art, this interview if Card Sharks, the, the game show, would have followed through. I was booked, and I was going to have a chance to play for a million dollars live on cable television. Ooh. And the damn COVID came through, and now I'm still hustling. I could have been a millionaire sitting in a pink kimono somewhere with my toes in the sand, but here we are. Oh, I mean, hey, that, never say never. I mean, that shows. Is it is it any rumor of it coming back anytime soon, or is it like? I'm gonna have to follow up with the dude. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. Are we winning a million or what? <laughs> All right, so let's jump right in. We got some fan questions for you, Zicky. The fans have been murmuring, so we got some fan questions, but also some uh, questions from members of the Invictus roster. We have some. Uh, we have some peeps who are big fans of uh, Zicky Dice and potentially want to wrestle Zicky Dice. Um, first question comes from, uh, not D Morgan. That's Dennis Morgan. Um, a lot of, you know, he's very, uh, you know, uh, beer drinking, leather jacket, wearing neon shades, wearing, you know, so you guys would party very well together in like a social situation. Um, he goes, when will you adopt me as your brother? He's a big fan of yours on, uh, the Instagrams. Uh, well, we, there's a few monthly fees that we can work out. Like, what kind of brother do you want? Do you want me to post a photo, brother? Do you want me to show up to a birthday event and vouch um, a funeral? You know, there's different payment plans. Let me know which what you're looking for in the the Zicky Dice Big Brother program, and we can get that figured out for you. Everything is for sale, fellas. Yeah. 
There we go. Dennis, you heard the man. You got to make that call. You heard it here, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. Um, Roberto Vargas asks, what is your favorite finisher? My favorite finisher? Mm-hmm. Well, it'd probably have to be the outlandish deck breaker. Mm. If you haven't seen it yet, look at it. Fire. Um, Magic. <laughs> Love it. Magic fingers. Uh, Ian Durango asks, favorite, favorite experience from uh, working with the NWA? If there was like something that came to mind as like, oh, I enjoyed this element of it. Um, well, the obvious answer would be just winning the television championship. Of course. Um, that came as a surprise to me the day of, like right before the match. I had no idea. Uh, and the storylines were changed to have Ricky chase me for the title. And uh, just having that. And I was very proud to be at the NWA and to have that championship. And my plan was to get it talked about, put a pink strap on it, and piss off all the nerds. And... Uh, and run wild literally and and uh help elevate that company and that title to where it needs to be um so that was a great experience overall and i was uh, like i said very proud to have uh been able to have that opportunity absolutely i mean you know a big standout moment of course is the classic where's my fanny pack promo um I just uploaded that uh little clip i Believe it or not, I, I'm dabbling in some acting stuff. My, everyone's like, you need to apply for commercial stuff. So I'm giving it a whirl, and I just submitted that as one of my, like, little, hey, I, I, I've done this. Great program. Yeah, that, I mean, that that's perfect. You know, the the passion behind it and, like, just the raw, like, you know, you, you really know how to bring out that uh, extra bit, a bit, a bit of uh, energy when it's needed. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. That would be the prime clip I'd use. Yeah, um. Oh, there you go. Uh, TKO Kosenko asks, um, when are you facing your long lost brother, Dennis Morgan? I feel like there's some lobbying, some politicking once here. Again, once again, yeah. um, <laughs> when am I facing? We can make that happen. We can do it live on my Twitch. There is the outlandish Ziggy Dice booking fee um, with the fine print. And also, but I will say this since you're also looking at the Big Brother Outlandish program, we can combine both for a a bundle or expensive fee. Well, the bundle, since being Easter, it goes up a little bit, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. No, it's the, 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 the time of year, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, there was a Twitter question from generic abs with two B's. He's a camp leapfrogger. Mm -hmm. Um, his question was, where do you primarily get your fanny packs? Um, there's a famous Italian fanny pack, uh, maker. Uh, his name is Giovanni. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. <laughs> Giovanni Galvano? I think we've heard of him. Yeah, something like that. He hikes up, and he has to go to Pink Glitter Mountain in Italy. Ah. Top secret, and he goes there, and he has to mine the pink glitter first. And then he has to take a camel, yes, a, a camel, over to a, a hidden location to find the material that he embeds in the pink glitter. And then he contacts me and bills me, sends me a big invoice for 16 racks. and. Uh, and that's that, yeah. That sounds like a very basic he's and simple very process. Hard, he's very hard. No, it's not. He's very hard to get a hold of sometimes. And he's, you know, you got to bribe him with different things. Oh, I thought, I, do you, does he just go by carrier pigeon? It's, dude, smoke signals. <laughs> uh, oh, man. A little beeping Morse code. Uh, hey, I get it, man. You know, especially in, you know, especially in all with modern technology, you got to find some way to communicate with someone. You can't just rely on these these zoom thingies um well that's awesome thank you for the fan questions that did get submitted um we did want to uh Ziki, we got a little time on our hands we want to be able to uh jump in a little bit of activities that sound like a plan to you i love activities of course yeah it's, it's like the stepbrothers line with the bunk beds more room for activities yes all right so everyone we are going to jump right in right now to our activity of the night which is uh welcome to invictus pro wrestling promo school Welcome back, everyone. We are here and we are ready for promo school with Mr. Zicky Dice. Zicky, how are you feeling? You know, if there's one thing Zicky can do, it's cut a promo. So I'm feeling all right. There we go. So we got some, uh, we got some uh, pretty, pretty prestigious uh, subjects lined up for you who are going to be our people for the evening. 
Um, so again, everyone, welcome to Invictus Promo School. And you know, we uh, we wanted to give you again, you know, 60 seconds on the clock to just shoot from the hip, whatever comes to mind, whatever you want to say, you know, put yourself in the uh, scenario where you're going to be facing <laughs> this jabroni. Okay. You're just seeing what okay. happens. Mr. Brony? Uh, no, jabroni. Oh, I like Mr. Yeah. Brony too. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, for starting off, we're, we're, we're going to give you a, we're going to lobby one a little bit to start off, you know, a, a little bit of a classic <laughs> figure. I'm sure familiar to you. Oh, uh, well, are we ready? Is there 60 seconds? Oh, yeah. Clock? No, yeah. Got you. All right, here we Boom. go. Oh. oh, Ricky Starks, my old friend. It's so nice to see you holding that title that's, well, not only cursed you, but cursed me too. I got to say, maybe one of the worst days of my life might have been pinning you. If I would have known that you would have left and not wanted another piece just so you can chase some other kind of dreams uh, and maybe go get a Dominican crooked haircut like you like doing and eating your Malto meal that you love ever so much. Ricky, there's going to come a point in time where we're going to see each other again. And I hope you remember that same feeling that you felt that day that I pinned you one, two, three, and yes, you left the National Wrestling Alliance. How was that? Chills. Chills. Well, Ricky, your response, my friend. <laughs> good guy, I'll say, all, good guy, right? I'll love with these. I'll love with these. You know, with uh, with uh, you know, promo school, you gotta you gotta even do it to your friends. You know, I shoot promos on Ryan in the car constantly, and he tolerates it. So, absolutely, you know, that was fantastic. Uh, we're gonna keep this party rolling. Uh, next up, we got. Oh Jim yeah, Cornet. Jim Cornette. All right. Whenever you're you ready. You smell it? exactly like you did at this exact moment, like Yokozuna's big ass. He might have ripped one on you that day, and that's why your upper lip smells that way. So I'm glad that I could solve that problem for you here now live. And uh, we almost had the chance of meeting when I was coming in and you were leaving. <sighs> but I do wish you well. Jim, me. <laughs> Jim, me. I love that. I was going to say, I, I, I was going to say, did you guys ever cross paths? No. Um, as I was coming in, that's right when he left, I was looking forward to meeting Jim Cornette and uh, having him commentate one of my matches. I thought that would have been really cool when I got the word that I was going to NWA. You're, um, you're, 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 you're in good company here. I, I myself am a Cornette stand rightfully so. Ignoring all the obviously terrible shit he's done, but sure, like, sure, 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 sure. And, and you know, at the end of the day, I'm a businessman, right? Yeah. And, um, and I thought it would have been very, very awesome and uh, something notable to have Jim Cornette call one of uh, my matches. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. You know, but hey, uh, uh, I was happy with what I got. Um, anyway, yeah. Hey, absolutely. I was just going to say. Um, all right. Let's keep this going. Got next up. <laughs> I wish you had this photo that he has in his uh, basement. It's like one of his like headshots. It is the <laughs> stupidest photo I've ever seen in my life, and I love it. Uh, Sex, Sex Ferguson. Ferguson. I'm going to expose your secret right here, right now. Yeah, you can take off that condom that you wear every single moment of your life because you're never going to use it. That's right. If you open up Sex Ferguson's wallet right there behind his Wells Fargo debit card, there is, in fact, a card in the shape of a V. Sex oh. is who you think he is, gentlemen. So, Sex, take off the bandana. Hell, take off the eye patch and go to church and be your true self. We're, we're here with open arms. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Are we saying that Sex Ferguson is more of the uh, pure Ferguson? I think so. I think so. Pastor Ferguson. Oh, man. He trained under really Doug cool. Flutie. Do you guys know Father Doug Flutie? This is youth pastor who like, runs a football team now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, sex. What gives, man? I feel I'm duped. Really Shout out to Sex Ferguson. <laughs> the yeah. answer rules. I've never I'm seen really this photo. About this what, what is, shot, this from? Is, is this from Talking Shop? Uh, actually, I, I'm not positive. I think so. 
Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big talking shop fan. You know, um, I have yet to watch one and two, and I need to do that. He asks me about them all the time, and I need to do that. They're they're fantastic. I yes. fully am like I'm just a big fan. We've done um, some sketches together, ZDTV and Talk and Shop, and those are up on YouTube. Uh, YouTube.com slash Ziggy Dice. Check those out. We have done some stupid stuff. He has just a hearse and plenty of land, and we just go and make a complete mess. And shout out to his his lovely wife who just lets us be complete idiots. Uh, I was just gonna say, you know, he seems like such like a like that dude, even when the cameras aren't rolling, you know what I mean? He just seems oh, like he's best. just He's the best. He's got a big heart, and the the dude loves to create content, and and, the, and that's what helps him stay relevant, you know. And that's uh, we hit it off right off the bat. Uh, moving here, um, Dave Marquez was like, "Oh, Gallows lives out there. You should reach out to him." So I sent him a message, said, "Hey, come over and film some content." So I came over, and that was that. He's um, we've filmed some stuff together. I, I, I wrestle for him out here. Um, He's come over and, uh, to the studio and been on the Twitch stream. So it's great. Uh, more content to come from uh, Sex and Zicky. Could we possibly be seeing Zicky Dice in a uh, boner yard match anytime soon? I'm sure we could. I'm sure we could. And I'm sure you can even see us in a, in, I don't know, maybe some kind of movie or a cartoon <laughs> or something, you know? I'd love it. I'd love that. Um, shout out Sex Ferguson again. Uh, great, great. I'm sure, I mean, great talent, but as it's nice to hear as well, great human. Um, ah, <laughs> this is one that I'm excited for just because I'm in Tampa and I hope people recognize him in public for different reasons. I'll Isn't leave it from there. Half ass looking mullet. I, you know, I know nothing about this dude. I would gladly box him on YouTube. I will do anything with him on YouTube. Hell yeah. I'll bring him on to Twitch and, and then we'll get creative. He is, is uh, some phony phony content creator who got lucky some way somehow and i'll whoop his ass in a wrestling ring and a boxing ring and american gladiator challenge hot dog eating contest you name it i love it no he's, he's, embarrass, uh, he's gonna embarrass himself he's a clown yeah, he's fighting he's floyd mayweather no oh, sometime wonderful. soon so wonderful. i would pay you to see any of those fights to be honest just to see logan paul get his ass whooped yeah, oh, Floyd is going to whoop his ass. I'm pretty sure that's the night he gets his ass whooped. Listen. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's also, really? dude, he's terrible. Like, he is terrible. But you know what? I got to give him respect. At the end of the day, I will say this. I'll take my fanny pack off to him. The man will do it when the uh, for the content, and I can respect that. We say I've been saying 100%. this for years. Doing it for the kids, baby. We're doing it for the kids. No, for I sure. Respect, I mean, hey, I do respect him for that, but at the same time, the reason I gotta whoop his ass is because we gotta make great content together. I totally get that. No, yeah, I mean, listen, it, it was definitely the weirdest crossover I think anyone possibly imagined was seeing him on SmackDown with Sami Zayn, let alone in a weekend like WrestleMania. Sammy's jacket and vest, though, that is pretty spy. Sammy's dance moves that night have been the talk of social media for the last twenty-four hours. So I did see snippets. Yes. He, I mean, hey, he's 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 working with what he's got, and he's making the most of it. This conspiracy theory is the most interest I've had with him, and like, not like in a while. Like, he's always been a fantastic wrestler, but like, this is like, oh, I can I I, I can drive with this. Yeah. Um, I didn't see it, but I saw the clips and, and the the jacket and the dance moves. That's enough for me. I like it. I was about to say, you know, that 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 that's enough to just show us gaining some yeah. eyeballs that maybe might have not so much. Uh, let's keep this moving. Next promo for the night. Ready. Oh, the television champion of a different organization. What a beautiful championship belt. Hey, what a beautiful jacket. The, the hair looks great. Darby holding something that I want oh so bad. And I might be the one that prize it from your dead body. Not too far. I know Darby's not afraid of death and hell, neither am I. He's afraid to live. And outlandish Ziggy Dice is going to teach him a thing or two about living. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to be living with that championship with my toes in the sand, with some clear blue water, a pink kimono on. And, hey, if the camera's rolling, we might have to censor it out a little bit because I'm going to have the li lizard hanging out loud and proud and enjoying my championship raid because one day I will be the talk of television and TNT and that belt that you love oh so much. We'll take care of it, Darby. In the meantime, how's that? Is that good? Awesome. 10 out of 10, man. Okay, cool. Enough. 
on a list of your accomplishments. Is skateboarding one of them? Can yeah, you out skateboard them? I broke my ankle uh, rollerblading once. <laughs> and I used to, when I had a skateboard when I was younger, I used to scrape it on the curb and the sidewalk before hanging out with my friends so it looked like I was grinding and doing tricks. <laughs> That's awesome. We call that we call that a poser, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Would, could, would you do any of the uh, death-defying stunts that he does, like jumping off a bridge? I will, or... do, it. I will do it all. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! That's awesome. Hell yeah. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure in Georgia, you guys get down with like you know some of that more crazier kind of stuff. You know, the uh, riding the uh, dirt bikes around, all that kind of stuff. You get wild, definitely. Yeah. Oh, awesome, man. Um, so let's keep this going. Let's keep this going. Who we got next? Who do we have next? Oh, <laughs> I would love to steal Mike Tyson's tiger. That I would love to do. <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure Mike Tyson, I would be able to get away with your tiger. And if you did catch me, I would hopefully duck and not take one of your oh so famous punches to the jawline because that would make Atlanta Suki Dice very sad. But as long as you let me keep the tiger, that stupid sweater he's wearing. It's probably very expensive, but it's so ugly. I was just gonna say it's, it's always the ugliest sweaters that cost the most for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's oh, Mike. And he did tattoo his face. That's still that's still Mike, wild. Mike, Mike. I'm about to say you have like some stomach tattoos. That like, what was the pain level like for that? Oh, that sucked. That sucked very bad. It hurts. Oh, I'm going I can to imagine. tattooed in a week and a half, and I'm I, I dread it. Don't be fooled. Love tattoos. Hate them. They they hurt very bad. Is there like one in particular that stands out as like, yeah, I'm never getting it anywhere near here again? The ribs hurt really bad. That sucked. Um, I do want to tattoo my armpit. I think that would look very cool. Oof. It's gonna, yeah, dude, dude. I've got a lot to do. I want to do my hand and my throat. I, I'm, you know, I'm already past the point of no return. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I I have a couple, but like obviously, you know, you have some like very big prominent pieces and spots that are like anyone would be like yeah i don't know if i would yeah. want to get stabbed by a needle there i want to do uh, i hear the back's very painful i haven't done the back yet but i want to do my neck to my crack uh, i've been wanting to do that for a while and I, i've been thinking about having like i would love to do two artists working on me at the same time just to get it over with you know like oh, yeah this is gonna suck so let's make it double suck for half the time you know it's, it's, it's like an ink master challenge when they had to do that yeah. like yeah Oh man, no, I'm a, I'm a big ink guy. Oh, that'd be awesome. I was about to say, you know, why not? Um, all right, let's finish. I, this. Uh, just tattooed his head, like the side of his head. And I always thought that'd be super cool too. But what do you get? Uh, it said something. I think it says. Okay. I don't remember exactly, but some script. But it looked really cool. That's very cool. I've always wondered, like, when people get tattoos on like their head, like one, like you know, like what exactly it is, because I know some people play into like the whole like, hey, it's my, it's like a little thing of a brain back here, like you know, like the head yeah, feeling stupid. kind of thing. Like, yeah, that's yeah, like none of that. I'd rather no get like a codes. Yeah, like I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd rather get like a, like, I'd rather get like a piece that like I'd like just in that yeah. spot than just having to just be like, hey, look at this because it's on my head. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't care. But no. hey, absolutely. No, I'm a big uh, ink guy myself. So much respect to you. Good luck with that. Uh. Good luck with that. Think think good thoughts during it. Yes, thank you. Um, all right, we're going to finish this off on a strong note. We're going to finish this off on uh, when they can make a, a bold statement to this person. 60 seconds for uh, the American Nightmare, oh. Mr. Cody Rhodes. Where do I even start? Where do I even start, Cody? Like I said, it's a, it's a misconnection. I think that me and you need to sit down and have maybe a Denver omelet with each other, and maybe a black coffee, and sit and really have a conversation. I, I think, Cody, you'd find that we have a lot in common. Cody is your favorite wrestler, and, well, Zicky's my favorite wrestler, and if we can maybe put those put that aside and come together and really talk about taking over entertainment as a whole i think you'd realize that how much you need outlandish sticky dice and how how we could take over the world together cody i'm close a whole lot closer than you think and i know that you know exactly who i am so stop playing games cody pick up the phone call today the best promo slash commercial 
It was like uh, yeah, that, that was like yeah, the most little, classic. I mean, pick up the phone, call today. Call today. <laughs> oh, this is also pre neck tattoo. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of that? I I mean, I got neck tattoos. I thought it was dope. no, no, no. Of course, no, no. Of course. I mean, like, but it was a fo- It was one of his own emblem kind of thing. You know, you know I, what I mean? I, I, I thought it was sick. I, you know, I, yeah. I, I was just thinking, I, I want to get outlandish tattooed somewhere. I mean, it's, there's no. I feel that. I definitely should. Um, you know, and uh, I am very impressed. I, I did have uh, one of my neck tattoos was a cover up of another one, and we had mm. add, added some red and blue, almost the same colors, and his stood out. It's very bright and vibrant. And I like that. Mine was not as bright, bright and vibrant. I mean, it, it, it got shit on a lot, and like I didn't, I didn't really no, dislike the didn't, placement of it. You know, like who cares? Yeah, like, who, it, it, like he, he didn't get the tattoo, and then like, when people like people say they try and shit on my tattoos, like oh Ziggy Dice is the worst tattoos. Well, guess what? I didn't get them for you asshole exactly you know got it for myself so who cares he, I, I just remember like after a kick-ass pay-per-view that was like the biggest talk of that whole pay-per-view was like his neck tattoo for some reason i was like did you guys just miss like some of these incredible matches yeah, that just happened yeah. on this like i don't know i don't understand some people with something like that like but i i appreciate that you know again breath of fresh air with like hearing a good perspective but yeah, yeah. zicky you know, let him live exactly yes, and you know sir. zicky just want to say man thank you for Coming to promo school, teaching us some lessons about how to cut, how to, about how to cut a kick-ass promo. Oh, this and Jennifer sick. coming and that, on, and, man. And that was a nice Sunday evening promo, you know, nice and relaxed. Think about what happens if we get a little fire limited in the school, though, you know? I was about Zicky. to say, you know, maybe a little, little uh, yes, sir. confidence juice. Do you have any plugs? Any plugs? Of course, if you want to follow this outlandish journey, I call life. I'm live five to six days a week, twitch.tv slash Zicky Dice and at Zicky Dice on every piece of social media. We just released a brand new Zicky Dice t-shirt through Collar and Elbow. And I've also got my pro wrestling tea store and ZickyDice.com for all of your merch and dice needs. Fantastic. Well, Zicky, listen, on behalf of everyone from Invictus, we just want to say thank you for giving us such incredible content and everything you've done in the past. And thank you for coming on the podcast. It has been a true honor for us to have you on and uh we hope to work in many different ways in the future so yeah keep an eye thank out on mr zicky dice me. appreciate you guys very much thank you all right well listen guys we will be right back soon with some news updates but this is it for uh, mr zicky dice so uh check out zicky and uh we'll be back soon Welcome back, everyone, to this week's news segment. Well, it's going to be a little different, not necessarily a news segment this week. It's going to be our prediction segment for this week. In light of WrestleMania 37 being around the corner, uh, this week we are going to be talking about what's being, what's going to be going on both nights and what our predictions are for all the matches. So let's start off with night one. First up, we have Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair. Uh, that is for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Uh, I'm personally going towards Bianca Belair. I think, you know, she's more of a fresh face right now going on in the division. I think she has a lot uh, to offer in terms of, you know, variety right now. But Sasha Banks has also been on quite a run, so it can go either way. No, I, I agree. Sasha Banks has been the champion. I, I do think they're going to give Bianca that push, though. I agree. Yeah. Um, you know, so we can – we'll see what happens. Yeah. Once again, my cast is going. Ape shit. Sorry about that, everyone. So next up, we have Bobby Lashley, current uh, WWE champion, versus Drew McIntyre. Now, Person. I'm going to go with Drew McIntyre surprisingly yeah. changing hands. I know the Hurt Business just broke up, and a lot of people are thinking maybe that's going to lead to them, you know, interfering as some sort of way to help Bobby win. But I'm still just, you know, I think Drew – has been on a very good run. I think he still has a lot to offer as a champion. Um, so that's kind of what I'm leaning towards right now. I'm not too involved with the WWE product nowadays, but one of the things I do like is Drew McIntyre. I, I, I also like Bobby Lashley. But, again, I agree that Drew McIntyre is going to take this win at WrestleMania. And uh, next up we have Bad Bunny versus The Miz. Um this is why Miz. I'm not WWE anymore. Yeah, yeah. That one is a dud match. I don't really care who wins, to be perfectly honest. I'm just going to go with The Miz because he's an actual wrestler. You know, um, because I read the other day that Bad Bunny has spent the past four months in the, their, their training facilities and that he's 
there's actually going to be a little bit of legitimacy to his wrestling style. That's cool. I don't care. Yeah. I don't, so. Uh, yeah, I, no, I don't get it. But I, I, I think they're going to give this win to Bad Bunny. Mm-hmm. Next up, we have the New Day, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods versus AJ Styles and almost, almost, I, again, I don't really watch, so, like, apologies if I just butchered that name. Um, tag team match for the WWE Raw Tag Team Championships. So I, think it's good, uh, I don't really know. I, I know think? we could almost start off as AJ's bodyguard. I, I, I do find AJ and almost together very entertaining when he's in a bodyguard capacity. I also do like the New Day quite a bit. Um, I'm going to go with AJ and almost for the win in this one. I'm going to go with New Day because New Day rocks. Oh, and, yeah. um, you know. I personally also I would I would hate to see uh uh I hate to say lower tier title be put on AJ Styles. Full oh, transparency. Tag team. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You Next know, up we have to, maybe to give almost that push. I, I could see them. No, that makes sense. That, that 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 definitely makes sense. Yeah. Um next up we have Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon in a steel cage. Listen, uh, Braun Shane Strowman. McMahon, Shane McMahon is a beast when he wrestles. He's had some of the craziest matches, but Braun Strowman is just a monster of a man. If Shane McMahon uh, wins, I'm going to sue. That's all I have to I think Braun Strowman is going to – I think if uh, if Shane wins, it's going to be because Braun throws him through the cage. Yeah. And uh, final match for night one is Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. I would love to see Cesaro win, but I think just Seth is already someone established in the main event picture – Unless they're trying to give Cesaro the rub that he's needed for 10 years, but it's, like, very overdue. Yeah. I would love to see it, but I'm just thinking, realistically, it's going to be Seth. But if Cesaro yeah. wins, I will be very happy. Yeah. So that concludes night one. Moving on to night two, we have uh, Riddle versus Sheamus for the WWE United States Championship. Um, Riddle. Uh, even though I'm not a big Riddle fan, um, he's the current champ. I don't see them putting it, taking it off the young guy to put it on the older veteran who doesn't really need the title reign. Sheamus is not going to gain any fans from a new, another title run. He's already well established. That's oh, just yeah. sort of how I see it. Ooh, this will be a fun one. With that. Yeah. Um, next up, we have Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. With Logan Paul. So if Logan Paul's the equalizer in this situation, then I gotta go with Sami Zayn. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Kevin Owens just because I, I like Kevin Owens. I think he is I think he's good at what he does. And um yeah. I, I, sure. I'm actually a little bit of a fan of Kevin Owens. That match he had Oh, for a while. I forget. I forget what it was. Where they did the the last man standing, even though that was a sloppy finish. You know, he, he's another one. He he's yeah. gonna hold his own. Uh, very true. Uh, so next up we have Big E versus Apollo Cruz for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, mm -hmm. Big E, just because I know Apollo changed his gimmick, I have no idea what he's doing, and that says enough to me to think the title's not gonna change hands. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, I, I agree. Right. He's definitely gonna keep that. Sorry, seeing this one pop up just made me kind of laugh. Uh, the Fiend Bray Wyatt with Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton. So we got a burnt dude. We got a burnt chicken nugget with Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton. Um, Randy Orton because the Fiend was probably the best thing going, and I think. The fact that they reintroduced him as a bird chicken nugget is probably the worst thing that they could have done for his character. Um, it doesn't look cool, in my opinion. It doesn't really look like the whole saying on fire thing was stupid to me. I know some people marked out for it. I felt like it insulted my intelligence. Um, not that I'm very smart to begin with, and that's saying something. It's so, funny because the whole burning the fiend thing works only in a cinematic type atmosphere with no yeah. live crowd. Um, I love the memes. I think uh, 
uh, where, where they compared the Fiend to the Toxic Avenger from like you know, the the nineteen eighties yeah. movie. Um, pretty accurate, you know. Um, and Bray Wyatt is insanely talented. I, I like Bray Wyatt as talent. I mean, Randy Orton's a dick, but I, I, I'm going to say uh, Orton's going to take this match. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? I, I, I'm Ryan's gonna undecided. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Bray Wyatt for this one. All right. He, he's, out for, he's out for blood. That's fair. Next up, we have Asuka versus Rhea Ripley for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. I will go with Rhea Ripley for this one. She I, has yeah, needed yeah. that for so long. Um, I, I agree. Again, it's kind of like the Bianca. Um, Asuka's been champion for quite a while. I, I think it's time to give... Rhea Ripley's very talented. I, I, I think it'd be smart to give her this push. No, oh, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Get some new blood on these championships. And to close off night two, the final match of WrestleMania will be the triple threat match for the WWE Universal Championship. The match that came from three guys who all at some point had their career compromised and or what they thought was finished. We have Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan. Now, this is a mixed bag because you got three guys. You got three potential really good stories coming afterwards. You have Roman potentially building more heat, really establishing himself as head of the table. He's been on a hell of a run. It'll only keep heating him up for when eventually he does lose the title to whomever. It'll just give it that much more validity and that much more prestige. Um, you have Edge, established guy, long road, incredible comeback story. This would be just the cherry on top of the cake or Sunday, whatever your dessert preference is, I guess. Um, Daniel Bryan, similar thing, came back from a injury that he thought was game over. And, you know, he came back and is in the title picture again. So you have three really interesting stories that come to this title picture and three ways that in some ways, all guys win being involved because all guys are there in that match. But it's a tough one. Who do you think is going to win? Uh, you know what? That is a tough one. I personally think it's going to be either Roman Reigns or Daniel Bryan. Um, huh. I'm kind of leaning more towards Daniel Bryan. And it's just like you said, you know, the, the story that's going to follow afterwards is because, you know, Daniel Bryan was out, he was on an injury, they didn't think he was coming back. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Daniel Bryan. You know, I, I, I think being a face, winning this match, I, I yeah, I'm going to go with him. Yeah, that's a solid pick. And honestly, that is who I've been leaning towards the most. Yeah. But... In the last couple of weeks, um, not in the last couple of weeks, I'd say like the last week building up to Mania, I've been leaning towards Edge. I think they no. want to give him one more run, but that's my personal opinion. Um, no. I think either way, the outcome will be fantastic. Whoever wins this match is going to win. Whoever loses this match is going to win in terms of like the stories that can come afterwards are going to be great. No, I, I get it because, you know, it's just like when I think about Edge and how, you know, I'm saying Daniel Ryan or Roman Reigns, you know, Edge has just as good of a chance that, you know, like they could want to give him this one more chance, uh, a title run. I mean, this really is anybody's game. That's true. You know? <sighs> it's true. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is our WrestleMania predictions for the 2021 WrestleMania season. Uh, we will, I'm sure, be revisiting this next year on the podcast when we have, who knows what, maybe a normal mania next year, maybe another socially distanced one, who knows. But that is our predictions for this year, at least. Um, what other announcement we would like to make is we, Ryan and myself, will be at the Collective Remix in Tampa for WrestleMania week. 
So to any Tampa people, whether you're talent, whether you're a promoter, whether you're anyone, or you just even just a fan wanting to come up and say hello, we'll be repping our masks. We'll be having you know cards to hand out. We'll be uh, shaking hands, kissing babies, doing the whole nine. So you know if anyone wants to come up and say hello, catch a drink with us, maybe catch a show with us, we'll be around. So you know we have to look out for our masks, our shirts, our gear, um, and we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, but that concludes. This week's episode of Power Hour, a different one for sure. Alex, we miss you. Again, this episode was certainly different without you being here, but uh, I had a blast. Ryan, I hope you had fun as well. Of course, as Absolutely. usual. Of course. So to everyone at home, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you to Zicky for coming on, to being our guest this week, and uh, we look forward to a fun week ahead. Uh, on that note, I am Nick Galman joined by Ryan Gross, and we are signing off. See you in Tampa. We welcome you, you insane-